guys, so this video links in with my previous one, which was on all the things guinea pigs love, but this one is just as important. There's a flip side to every story, so today we are going to cover all of the things guinea pigs absolutely hate. By the end of this video, you'll know what to do or what not to do around your guinea pigs to make sure they don't develop a grudge against you or hate you. Or something less savage than hate. Mild displeasure? First up is an important one to do with handling, and for most of us guinea pig owners, it's just something we have to realise and accept. It's that guinea pigs hate being touched in the wrong place and usually also hate being picked up. It's the ultimate confirmation that we are actually huge predators out to capture them and eat them. When all we really want to do is cuddle them and love them, it can be difficult to see them scared and running away from us all the time. But this doesn't mean we should avoid it completely, as handling is an important part of taming. So start off by using a cosy sack or a blanket to scoop up your pigs in, rather than grabbing them with your bare hands. And when you're stroking them, avoid the no-go areas. These are usually anywhere which isn't the head, neck or shoulders. Most guinea pigs will flinch and jump away or make irritated sounds if you try and stroke them too far down on their back or around their bottom or along their sides. The next one is a hotly debated topic in the guinea pig world, but there's no argument that guinea pigs usually hate it, and it's having a bath. So imagine you're a guinea pig, you don't like water, you don't like being handled, you don't like strange new environments and smells. Basically, having a bath sucks. The debate is around whether they need baths at all, and whilst most short-haired piggies do a great job at keeping themselves clean, if your guinea pig has longer hair or is just dirtier in general, then a bath might be needed, but no more than like two a year. And often you can avoid the need for a bath in long-haired pigs by trimming the hair around their bottom to keep things cleaner. So avoid baths if possible, but if you do have to give your guinea pig a bath, do it in a small washing up bowl on the floor in case they jump out. With no more more than a few inches of water and try and make it as fast as possible so they don't get too stressed out by the whole experience. Number three is another grooming one, but this time that every guinea pig needs doing. By the way, there's no more grooming ones after this. I think we've gathered that guinea pigs hate being touched in any way, shape or form. Okay, they do sometimes, that's just me being dramatic again. Number three is nail clipping, and as a general rule, guinea pigs don't like having their feet touched, so grabbing them and trying to cut their nails is never going to go down well. But we can't let the nails overgrow, so once you've got the technique, try to make it quick offer treats and fresh vegetables to distract them, and you can even try touching their feet from when they are a young age so they become more accepting of it. Number four is something we can have a bit more control over and it's avoiding delays at feeding time. Guinea pigs are creatures of habit and they like a set routine. It makes them feel safe and secure and like they know what's coming next. So say if you normally always feed them some fresh food or pellets at around five o'clock every day, they'll tune into that time. And for starters, they'll let you know by squeaking when 5 p.m. is approaching. If five o'clock passes and time drags on, they'll become agitated and start to wonder what the hell has happened to mealtime. This might involve more squeaking, sitting there impatiently just looking grumpy, or even choosing to get in a strop and blank you for the next couple of days. And the same can happen with topping up their hay and changing their water bottles, though the times for these are probably more flexible and vary throughout the day. Basically, don't leave your guinea pigs waiting for food for too long, otherwise they won't be very happy piggies. one that isn't our fault. Okay, the fifth thing that guinea pigs hate is when other guinea pigs annoy them. Yes, guinea pigs are highly social animals and wherever possible they should always be kept in bonded pairs or groups. I'm not disputing that here. However, even guinea pigs they live with can get on their nerves. I guess it's kind of like us with housemates. Except I wouldn't lunge at a flatmate baring my teeth in a show of annoyance. Lunging and nipping is a common guinea pig behaviour though, and a normal response to another guinea pig winding them up. Maybe the other piggy is trying to get them to move from their favourite spot, or is trying to steal their food, or is just getting a bit too close for comfort. 
Whilst they are social animals, guinea pigs very much appreciate their own space and you don't often get two guinea pigs cuddled up together unless they share a very close bond, which is quite a special thing. So when you see them getting irritated with each other, maybe consider how a cage upgrade or changing out the layout or putting in more Heidi's might help. But if you've done all these things already, then you can accept it as a normal part of your guinea pigs relationship. Moving on, and the next one is travelling. Occasionally, we might have to take our guinea pigs in the car somewhere, be it the vet, maybe to someone's house so they can look after them for us, or if we're moving house and they're coming along with us. Travelling usually involves being put in a carrier or a box, and it's a new, different environment that they're not sure they'll be safe in. Then there's the sounds of the car, the movement and vibrations, and sounds from people in the car that might freak them out. Some guinea pigs settle down and cope okay, but most will be a little stressed out by the situation. So you can help by having lots of hay in their enclosure, and maybe having some fresh snacks on hand if they'll eat them, but try to keep noise down apart from talking softly to them and make sure they aren't too disturbed during the journey. Next up might sound like a strange one or something we might even find funny, but to our guinea pigs it's not. It's the fact that strange or new sounds can make them freeze up and sometimes do a short sharp rumble noise, which is a sort of freaked out response. So say if you click your fingers and your guinea pig responds in this way, don't start clicking your fingers over and over again because you think their reaction is funny. You'll just be scaring them and make them associate you with being frightened. This doesn't mean you always have to be super careful though. Guinea pigs are good at adapting to hearing different noises and they do fine living inside a busy household. In fact, I'd always recommend having indoor pigs over outdoor ones as it's so much easier to bond with them and tame them over the the long term. Number eight is another one relating to our duties as head guinea pig carer. And it's that guinea pigs don't like being left with a dirty cage or dirty areas inside their cage. It might seem like sometimes they're happy to just sit in their own pee and poo, but it's not hygienic for them. And they are pretty stubborn animals, so they'll probably continue to use their favourite spots, even if they're not as pleasant and clean as they once were. down to us to make sure we do a spot clean on a daily basis and clean out the full cage, I'd say at least once a week. That should keep everything feeling nice and clean for our piggies. And if you're feeling bummed out after learning about all the things guinea pigs hate, then it's time to find out what they love most. Hopefully that video will cheer you up and offer you some inspiration on your own guinea pig care routines. As always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye!